what? We're getting ready to talk about sex. That's right. I said it. Sex, 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 sex. And now for a segment I like to call Vintage Sex Education. Then at puberty, certain glands begin to work and our bodies begin to change. But where are these glands? Yeah. And what's puberty? Eh, uh, maybe not. Now look, when we talk about sex, you may get a little uncomfortable, a little fidgety in your seat. And whatever you do, don't make eye contact with the person sitting next to you while we're talking about sex. I'm just messing with you. But seriously, right now I want us to do something that is awesome. We do this at every Thanksgiving at my house. So on the count of three, I want everybody to shout out sex. I'm totally kidding about Thanksgiving. We don't do that at all, it'd be gross. Here we go, one, two, three. Sex! See, nobody got hurt, it's okay. And when done the way God intended, sex is a very beautiful thing. In fact, the Bible is full of verses explaining God's plan and purpose for sex. Look, there's some words out there. I know them, you know them, and then make your giggle box go off. <laughs> so let's get them out of the way. Sexuality, intercourse, Procreation, virgin, virginity, second generation virginity, west virginity, adultery, fornication, sexy, sexual immorality, kissing. What kind do you like? French, Spanish, Indonesian? First base, second base, third base, home run! <laughs> The celebration of actions which baseball innuendos are used to describe are designed specifically for use within the confines of marriage. Passion, patience, purity, STD, HIV, LSD, KFC. Oh wait, no, no, the last two are drugs and chicken. They don't have anything to do with sex. I don't think. Okay, are we good? Because listen, sex, it is a beautiful thing that God gave us to enjoy in this great life we have. So sit back, relax, and listen up while we talk about sex. Welcome back to Life on the Rock. I'm Doug Barry along with Father Mark. We are the Rock House Compadres. Thanks for being with us tonight. We are in the Rock House hidden high in the mountains of truth. Mount Truth <laughs> is where we are at. You look out the window, you see our trees. Beautiful out. We were just talking about that, how it's, it's always the same time of the day. <laughs> the wind is never blowing. No. It's a perfect evening out here. I'm, I'm, on, I'm on to you guys. Yeah. Something's what? fake here. No. What are you talking about? <laughs> fake? No. It's just... <laughs> Don't tell anybody. <laughs> we had to blindfold him to bring him in here. He doesn't know exactly where we're at. <laughs> anyway, Chris, good to have you back on the show Great again. Yeah, Thank yeah, you. all right. You're here again. And mm -hmm. uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. So the audience, the old people can remember you, the old audience viewers, and those who have seen you before and anybody new. Tell us who you are, where you come from, and why you're here. Uh, born and raised in New Jersey. Um, uh, director of Youth, Young Adult, and College Campus Ministry for the Archdiocese of Denver. Uh, awesome place to be. Uh, get to write books give talks all around the country, um, give a lot of chastity uh, assemblies at high schools, which is specifically why, why we're here talking about that tonight, okay. and a dad of five kids, all right, which all is right. the thing I'm most proud of in life. All right, so. all right. <laughs> And you're married too. And married. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just trying One to. wife, five kids. <laughs> there, there, they are. there they are. Look at that. Beautiful. Disgustingly cute. <laughs> you talking about yourself in that picture? <laughs> oh, man. Your kids are, yeah. No, that's great. Now they're all are they watching right now. You think? Well, you know, tonight's on chastity, so there's some things that my seven-year-old probably wouldn't. Yeah. I wouldn't want them to know yet. Sure. So, so thank back, God. back to the Legos, son. That's right. Back right. to the Legos. Mm -hmm. Yep. Go grab your toy sword. Go kill some dragon or something somewhere. <laughs> right? Something wholesome. <laughs> yep, absolutely. Go kill some of your toy sword. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, good to have you on here. I know there's a lot of different things we can talk about. Now, you've been doing this for how many years? How many years you've been working in the faith, traveling, uh, speaking? doing this kind of stuff? 12 years in, in, uh, in full-time youth ministry and speaking for the past like four years around the country. Okay. It's been an awesome blessing. All right. You know, um, and I'm, I'm, I'm really passionate about the, the chastity talks. What an awesome um, 
way to deliver not just a message about uh, a specific virtue, but on the whole faith. Yeah, you know? before we get into some of this, you know, I, I want to address something about, you know, um, for, for people to understand, because, you know, mm -hmm. you and I, um, much much more like-minded, I think, because of, of the type of work. Mm -hmm. I've been doing it for 20 years, roughly. Mm -hmm. Did some youth group work before that, traveled about 19, 20 years now. Mm -hmm. uh, all over the country, four or five other countries, and, and so, you know, we, we share that kind of kinship by doing that the same type of work. And mm -hmm. it really is, um, I think it's hard for people to understand, this is, it's a real battlefield. It is, yeah. Because you're going into a presentation and you're going to talk to young people about the most important, you're talking to anybody, whoever you're talking yeah. to, about the most important thing. Yeah that can ever be addressed, and that is their relationship with God. Yeah. You know, you're discussing eternal matters. You're discussing behaviors in this world that affect eternity. Mm -hmm. This is not something to be taken lightly. No. And it is not, it's something also that I think people have a hard time understanding, that when you go home, you don't necessarily just leave your work and yeah. go home. You, yeah. you, you, you take these people's lives with yeah. you to yeah. some degree. Yeah, absolutely. And talk about no, that so a no, bit. It, never, it never ceases to amaze me, uh, the, the battle that we're in and the effects it never ceases to blow me away. I mean, the, you know, the automatic thought when I go into an assembly and there's 800 kids there between algebra and lunch and half of them could care, no, half, that's generous. Yeah. More than half could care less about what you're going to say. Sure. And you have a life-changing, profound message between algebra and lunch about <laughs> why they should wait till marriage. Uh, but it, again, it never ceases to amaze me, the response. I mean, it blows me away. I mean, these kids who the world would think would throw tomatoes at you, I'll get standing ovations. Mm. Kids, will, kids will be clapping. Kids will be crying. There will be kids text messaging their boyfriend or girlfriend to break up before my talk's over. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> it's, it blow, and that's been my consistent experience in youth ministry in general. Right. You know, we'll, we'll do things, you know, really bold and crazy. Like you got 500 junior hires in a, in a room in a big retreat, and you do adoration for, for an hour. And, and again, the, the instinctual you know, thought is, well, this is going to bore kids. Yet they're completely glued to it. Right. See, it's not the kids aren't interested in the faith. It's not the kids aren't interested in, in the most important things in life. Or th it's not that they're not interested in, in the message of chastity and purity. It's just that no one's given it to them. Right. So when someone gives it to them, the response is overwhelming. You know? and, and don't you think also that the enemy, I mean, the mentality of the enemy out there, where, I mean, ultimately the enemy is salvation, you know, Lucifer and his minions, but those puppets in this world, anyone, any of us who would cooperate with the enemy would want to pass that message that, ah, this is, this is, this is useless. What are you doing? Kids are going to do what they're going to do anyway. Mm -hmm. None of this works anyway. Yeah. You know, and, and so that, that attitude uh, permeates a lot of society that says, you know, they don't want to hear this stuff. Just let them play their games. Let yeah. them have their yeah. sports, let them dress the, in their fashions yeah. and, and go to their movies and their concerts and just let them do what they want to do and not even give it a chance yeah. to say, no, if we sit and talk to them about these things, their hearts are, are, are wired for this. They were made for it. Right, right. They were made for it. You know, and a lot of times it's even mom and dad who think, well, you know, I messed up in this area of my life and I turned out okay. Well, I'm in counseling and I have a couple pills that I take the rest of my life, but sure. I'm okay, yeah, yeah. whatever. <laughs> you know, and they're not really okay. Uh, right. When you think about all that's at stake, you know, you realize this is not something we could just, an issue we could just breeze over. Right. Uh, half a million Americans are dead from AIDS. That's the Vietnam War Memorial times 10. Uh, over 20, 20, about 25,000 women in America become infertile every year from STDs. Um, divorce rate for kids who don't wait through high school, it's 50% higher. Um, kids who, who are, are sexually active in high school are earning 16% less throughout their entire life. There's so many different ways it's hits on the well, psyche, and, and on, what's on the, the psychological development. And the statistic of, of early dating, because that's a big one. You get into mm -hmm. early dating mm -hmm. situations. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've been in talks where, you know, you got girls out there and guys yeah. out there who, you know, if their eyes had laser bolts in them, laser beams, they'd look like they'd burn a hole through your head when you tell them you shouldn't be dating. Oh, yeah. yeah you know, yeah. early on. What? And then, then when you explain it and talk about it, then sure, sure. It's, like, it's like a load gets lifted off their shoulders. But what's, what's the stat on that? Yeah, absolutely. Well, again, there's, there's way too much at stake for us to brush over this issue. And, and dating's a, a whole piece of it. Um, 16 is, is a magical line, okay? Uh, kids who date before 16, guys, only 29% of them are virgins by the time they graduate high school, and only 10% of girls are virgins by the time they graduate high school. Kids who start dating after 16, over 80% of them wait through high school. Wow. You know, so again, this is, some, this is an area where mom and dad come into the picture. Uh, sorry to set you up for a major battle at home, <laughs> but 
uh, that's a stat you just can't you just right. can't ignore. Yeah, you know? and you just you cannot give in to the pressures of society. You know, yeah, but you know, 13 and 14, yeah, but Jimmy and Susan and Barbara and yeah, Shaniqua yeah. and Laquita and whoever, they're all dating. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, oh, okay, yeah. well, we'll just go along with it. You can't do that. Yeah. You can't, especially the men out there. It, it kills me to see dads out there. You and I are both dads. We both have daughters. It kills me when I when I see a lot of guys out there. Their daughters are walking through the parking lot of the grocery store going on in. They're wearing shorts with something written across the backside of the shorts. The girl's 13 or 14 or 15 mm -hmm. and like this isn't something that lowers her dignity to have something written across you know the rear end yeah. of her clothing yeah. the dad's right there and I'm thinking do you not have a clue as a man what's going through a lot of men's minds in general the yeah. battle that men fight in the first place but yeah. second that a lot of guys have bailed out of actually calling on God's grace to fight the battle mm -hmm. and all you're doing is setting your daughter up for more problems yeah. I mean what would you say to guys when it comes to that well honestly, when, when you said lower your dignity lowering the dignity that, that's that's the end the end effect uh, that really hits at the heart of the chastity message. Mm. This is not just about saying no to diseases. Uh, you know, it's not just, just giving them a message that you have to say no, or else you're going to get a disease, go to hell, get pregnant. You know, though fear can be a legitimate sure. motive sometimes. Imperfect contrition is based upon, you know, the loss yeah, yeah. of, loss of how, what, what the, forgive me, Father, my mind went blank for a second. Act uh, of contrition. Not so much the done. You regret the sin for a love of God, but uh, fear of hell. Fear of hell, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's considered imperfect contrition, yeah. which is, is legitimate, is it not? Imperfect yeah. contrition. Right, yeah. right. And it's to move us towards a more perfect contrition. So, but the, no, this, whole, this whole chastity message is, is not about just saying no. Just saying no isn't sufficient to motivate someone against the greatest temptation mankind's ever known. Right. We say, you know, the Nancy Reagan's Just Say No campaign, God bless her. I don't know how effective that kind of thing is. Young people need to be saying yes to something. So the yes right. to the chastity message, the yes to modest dress, the yes to the whole thing is about saying yes to my dignity as a human being. Right. Uh, yes to God and His plan for my life. Uh, yes to safety. Yes to success in the future in my marriage. Yes to even the financial success, or sex and success in my education. And, and ultimately, above all, yes to authentic love. That's the real motivator for teens. If they think that sex equals making love, if they buy into the lie of what they see in half the movies they watch, well, you know they're in love because they're in the backseat of a car after a half hour of being together in the movie. You know, if they buy into that lie, a lot of them would rather be dead than not loved. So all the fear tactics in the world are only going to go so far. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we ultimately have to be saying, say yes to authentic love. Right, right. Now, you said you, you go in to give a chastity talk and you wind up talking about the whole faith. Uh -huh. What is, is chastity not just a minor virtue? How does it connect to the... Oh, really, yeah. No, it's, and it's a beautiful way to package yeah. and deliver the message of the whole faith. Now, I do, I do give this at, at public schools as well, and uh -huh. extract the faith message, but, right. you know, you can't fully extract the, the, thought, the fact that people are thinking about God when you talk about something of meaning. Right. That's, just, that's just really in life. But, you know, really, it ties into the whole faith because we're delivering a message about how only living according to God's plan works for our lives. Uh, how when we experience the most profound brokenness in our lives, that there's a Father, a Heavenly Father, who's, willing, who's ready to pick us up. We're talking about human dignity. So there's, there's themes in a chastity talk that make it an extremely effective way to deliver a message about the entire faith. And that's why I get emails from kids after my talks, not just saying, you affected my decision to wait, but, but saying, you just changed my life. Mm -hmm. I realize that I'm, that, that, that I'm, I'm worthy, that I have right. a dignity that nothing can take away. Mm -hmm. And that's really the gospel message. Because so often we, we're constantly bombarded with it, you know, this is independent, and I have my faith and my belief in God, and this is just yeah. something extrinsic, yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's not in the heart of the relationship, yeah. or, yeah, I mean, absolutely. you know, we speak of like heaven as a beatific vision, this having this pure heart, this vision of God, the single-heartedness mm -hmm. for God, mm -hmm. and unchaste actions, right, takes us away from that, right, that connection. It does, it does, it takes yeah. away from, from who God is, it takes us away from who we are. Right. You know, we ultimately start forgetting who we are through these kind of things, and it lowers, like you were saying, the sense of dignity that we have as human beings. And I think when it comes to, to, to teenagers, to children in general, I mean, as parents, that is our job. To, to mentor and teach that, and especially us men, you know, gentlemen, you know, you guys out there watching right now, our job as men is to make sure that our children understand we need to be fighters for their dignity, for the truth and the beauty of who they are as human beings. We've got to run to a break right now, ladies and gentlemen. Do not go away. Come back and visit us here at the Rock House at top Mount Truth, with the beautiful scene outside the window here. We'll be back right after this. Don't go away. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
We're back, ladies and gentlemen. The Rock House uh, compadre is Doug Barry, along with Father Mark, my good friend. And we have Chris Stefanik with us here, high atop Mount Truth in the Rock Woo! House here. Yeah. We, Father said before the break, see a t shirt coming. <laughs> Mount Truth. <laughs> all right. Chris, good to have you on the show again. Yeah. Uh, all right, warfare. We talked about this before the show. You used the term war. This is a clear war. I want to be a realist here. You know, ladies and gentlemen, watch it right now. I don't want, let's not sugarcoat things. Yeah. Okay, we don't want people to watch this and think, oh, look, there's a lot of hope because the young people are coming alive. That's true. Yeah, yeah. That is happening. But there's a lot of carnage in yeah, the midst. There is, there is. I mean, when you're talking about one out of four teenagers, roughly, according to the Center for Disease Control, is saying one out of four teenagers is walking around with an STD. And yeah. some of these are, as a good doctor friend of mine says, they're like diamonds, they're forever. Some of these aren't going away. You don't just take a cream or a pill or whatever yeah, yeah, and just have yeah. it done away with. Yeah. They will carry this into their lives, the rest of their lives. They're going to mm -hmm. carry it into their marriages in future. It's going to devastate. You know, a lot of women coming out with cervical cancer because of, because of uh, STDs and such. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is a serious battle. Is. This is, is a fight. So while there are people listening and, and taking to heart the message, there's still a lot of people that are, oh, yeah, that are, yeah, that are really yeah. hurting and torn apart by this. So th let's talk a little bit about no, that, about the warfare absolutely. and the battle. And it is, like, like you said, we, there, there's a lot of good happening. Right. And it's crucial to remember that we are winning this war. Absolutely. Uh, over half of teens in high school are now waiting. Only 5% of them are embarrassed about it. So that means there's a, there's a cultural shift going on to where most kids are waiting and most of them are actually proud of it. Uh, so from 91 to 2005, sexual activity rates among high school boys dropped almost twice as fast as it did among girls. So it's definitely a cultural shift, mm -hmm. and that, that gives us a lot of reason to hope that, that when they hear the message of truth, they're responding. But you and but I, there's a lot of carnage. You and I agreed on something before the show. Absolutely. You know, after doing this kind of stuff long enough, as you know too, that when you hear people come up and say, "Well, if you reach just one, then you know that that's good," and mm -hmm. that is good. Mm -hmm. But we are not as Christians supposed to settle. For just no, one. no, we want to get them all. Yeah, I mean, the St. Francis's and St. Yeah. Alphonsus's and, and, and the other missionaries, they didn't say, okay, let's just go reach a few for conversion. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let's convert well, the world. Yeah, and, and, and really, with, with the cultural war going on, if we keep our mouths shut, the kids are going to get the message about what sex is all about, what the meaning of life is all about, all this in general, from somebody else. Mm. Someone's going to evangelize them with their message. Right. You know, and speaking about the cultural war, the, the government spends $12 on comprehensive sex education for every, to every one dollar on abstinence education. All right, there's over 50 million dollars available from, from the government for abstinence education and half the states have rejected it. All right, there's definitely a cultural war and a lot mm -hmm. of them rejected it with the false premise um, that abstinence education is ineffective. Now there's been over 30 scientific studies that have proven that abstinence education is effective. Now, a lot of the stuff that the states are going by to say it's not, it's basically false information. There was one study that, that made the papers recently. It was all over the place, man, ABC, you know, whatever. It was everywhere. Um, there was a, a scientist from John Hopkins University that showed that there was no difference. If, if a kid got uh, abstinence education and took an abstinence pledge in an assembly or something like that, or if a kid didn't, they studied both these groups and showed there was no difference between the two. I remember that coming yeah. out of the news. So, so and this was a way to, to basically say that abstinence it's, it's education, all useless. taking Don't pledges, what's the, what's the purpose Don't of bother, because kids can't control themselves. That's the premise. Right. You know, someone dug a little bit deeper and found that the two groups this person was comparing were, had a striking similarity. Both of them were from deeply religious households. So what's that tell us? That tells us that if someone's really religious and they're getting it from the church, they're getting it from their parents, that whether or not they're getting it from school, it doesn't make that much of a difference in addition to that. Mm. So mm. basically, the study tells us nothing. Right. You know, yet states reject abstinence funding on things like that. You know, so there's definitely a cultural war going on, and, and, we, we, you know, and, and the opposition is extremely well-funded, and they know what they're doing. Sure. They sure. know what they're doing, and well, we have to be and twice as energetic to we, get our message we do, out. Yeah, we've got to get, we gotta be aggressive. This is something that I know, um, you know, uh, a convertee from uh, Planned Parenthood made a statement that she would go into classrooms, you know, uh, third grade, second, third grade classrooms, and they would uh, purposely set the kids up, boy, girl, boy, girl, boy, girl. Mm -hmm. And then they would talk to the students and ask them, well, how do your parents talk to you about your bodies? Yeah. And start breaking down some of the conversations, start breaking down some of the terms and making them more familiar with yeah. it. They'd laugh and they'd giggle. But she said that we knew that if we went in and started teaching them this way at this age, by the time they were in junior high, one out of three of these girls had become coming to us for abortions. Wow. And there's money there. Wow. So you're, the enemy does have an agenda, yeah. and the more they hear about abstinence, the more they, you know, being effective, the more they're going to lose their money. Yeah, and the Planned Parenthood Research Council actually recently had to admit that the number one cause for unplanned pregnancies is not a failure to use contraception, but a failure of contraception to work.
Mm. All right, they, 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 it's all, they know what they're doing. Yeah, they know exactly yeah. what they're about. Right. Uh, now, there, another recent study showed that less than 10% of parents, once they know what's being taught in sex ed class, actually approve of the message. And at the heart of the message is that, well, it's not, you know, it doesn't really matter. And actually, if you're using, quote, protection, it's actually safe and responsible behavior. and can be fulfilling. You know? Most parents are not for that. Um, and this is of mainstream America. This is not a survey done of Catholic parents. Now, the mm. problem is most parents don't ask questions at the, at what's going on at the school. Mo most parents don't know what's, you know, what's being taught in the classroom or won't complain about it. Right. You know, so it's really high time for parents to, to wake up and realize that there's a, a very well-funded war going on here. And, and that they need to step up and fight their part. Could you also talk about some of the other controls that a parent can have, like over this concept of you know, sending sexual messages across yeah, phones yeah, and everything? Yeah. And there's, there's lots of things parents can do. And I have, uh, like you said, a book coming out with Jason Everett, uh, Raising Pure Teens. Mm -hmm. It's coming out in about a month or two. Go to my website, sign up for my e-newsletter, you'll be among the first to find out about it, all right? So we list a lot of practical tips in there. Um, but yeah, as far as protecting your kid from the media, uh, and this is disturbing right. stuff that, right. that people are finding out about the media. 90% of kids between 8 and 16 have seen pornography online, most of them while doing homework. Mm -hmm. uh, the pornographic industry sends out 2.5 billion emails per day mm -hmm. in our country alone. I didn't say million. I didn't slip up. It's 2.5 billion. Now, and, and, and explain that to people more generally is that this is just kind of at random. They're, they're, they're mm -hmm. spidering addresses, they're yeah. collecting email addresses, and they're just and sending them, them out, out to, to the world. Yeah. Hoping that someone, yeah. out of curiosity, clicks mm -hmm. on it, follows it, gets hooked, yeah. and, and then they and make And a lot of these companies, and, in addition to that strategy, a lot of these companies are purchasing the names of children's toys and TV shows mm -hmm. to get little kids exposed really early. And they're just friend to friend, right? People could send sexual explicit material to their friends through the cell phone. That's true, right. too, yeah. And you, you were saying there's some kind 48 of... Forty-eight percent of teens have received uh, a, what they call sexting, yeah. a, a sexually explicit text message. Now, there are ways that parents can, can get involved in, in helping to, to stem that tide. Yeah. Uh, there's a one great website called BeSecure.com, the letter B, Secure. Another one called BrickHouseSecurity.com. The Be Secure is a great website monitor that right. helps you determine where your, what sites your kid is trying to visit. Uh, the Brick House Security uh, website um, sends you copies of a kid's text right. message if they're inappropriate. I mean, so you can monitor these things, and boy, that's really going to help your kid be responsible. If he knows, mom and dad's going to see what I'm texting <laughs> to my friend right now. <laughs> right. And, I mean, basically, the message is a parent has to know where their child is going when they use the media, on the yeah. internet, or with the phones, you just have to know in this day and really, age, yeah. you know, yeah. what's, what's going and, on. And really, despite all the teens' good intentions, mom and dad have to help. Right. You know, um, there, there was a, it was previously thought that your brain was pretty well developed when, by the time you were an older teenager. Now it's discovered that there's a lot of gray matter in, in the part of the areas of the brain, gray matter meaning your brain's still forming, uh -huh. and the part responsible for problem solving and decision making until you're about 20, 21, 22. <laughs> so you might ask a teen, That's what were you thinking? For men and women, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's even, I think for men it's 31, 32, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but you I'm might ask a teen, what are you thinking? And they'll say, you know? I, I wasn't thinking. Uh, yeah. You know, <laughs> and, the, and they'll be honest with you that they weren't thinking. That, that blank stare, it's actually real. It's totally blank sometimes. <laughs> Now, they are capable of greatness. I don't want to underestimate them. But where God has uh, not provided a fully developed brain, he's provided mom and dad. Yeah, yeah so right. mom and dad have to step in and, and help and do their part. Right. And again, those website monitors. And mom and dad, if you have a block on your computer and the block in the, you know, the password is your child's name, I just want to tell you right now, they figured it out. <laughs> okay, because I'll get emails from kids saying, I can't stop looking at porn. I said, you know, have your mom and your dad put a block on the computer that'll, that'll cut your problem out. Really, if you're really serious about leaving a sin behind, leave the opportunity behind, the sin will go away. All right. You know, and, and there's so many devastating ways that this can impact someone's life, the way they see women, the way they see themselves, the way they approach sex. You know, so remove that sin. I say, you know, have your mom and dad put a block on. Well, it's my name. What okay, well, have them do a different block. <laughs> what, are, what are some of the tools? You have a young person that's caught up in this mm -hmm. stuff. What do you tell them to get out of it? I yeah. mean, they, they got the habit built up. Some are addicted. How do you get out of it? Yeah, well, you know, I give, I give teens practical steps for being pure. I mean, purity is, and chastity, it's a virtue. And just like a muscle of the body, the more you build it up, 
the stronger it gets. All right? That's why you have your great camp that has a lot of workout tied into the spiritual um, lessons. Because really, there, there's definite connection there. Fire power. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> the gun show. Uh, uh, it's, it, it's a but soul you're, workout. You're right. And that we do that with the guys. We make that point. You know, yeah. you've you, you got to train the body. You want to be healthy and physically strong. You have to train the mind. You also have to train the soul. You have to train the soul. Right. And, and you, again, you present things in an attractive way like that. And hey, I could do that. Yeah, I'm going to man up. I want to be a real man. A sure. real man can control himself. Right. A real man knows how to put the dignity right. of a woman first. If they see that as real manhood, if they see that as real love, then they might be attracted to it. And don't you think a lot of this goes back to the mentoring that has to come from the older men? I mean, yeah. dad has got to get in there and teach the boys and his daughter about what it is to understand what a fighter as a man should be, shouldn't be, uh, hopefully steering the daughter away from being interested in dating any guy who does not have that, that understanding and that spirit of being a true fighter and somebody who truly treats a lady with respect and dignity. Yeah, men, men have to, you know, women can affirm our, our masculinity, but only a man can confer masculinity right. on another man. Right, right. You know, that's, that's got to be my job as a dad with my boys. Well, and another thing, too, Chris, I think that, that, that's got to be mentioned here is that, you know, um, we're talking about putting blocks on computers and, and, and holding kids accountable and such, and that's great. That's very important to do. But we, one thing that, that, that I'm most concerned about is when you hear the studies and the numbers of people who just, you know, are not going to church. You know, we say that in some places in Europe, it's less than 10% in some places and even less. Australia, 12%. In America, it's roughly 30% that are going to Mass on a regular basis, yeah. let alone the 25% yeah, yeah, now. Okay, so you got what? You know, two-thirds or three-quarters of people not going to the sacraments. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, how are we going to fight these fights, if we, these battles, if we don't go to the source of strength, grace itself. So, I mean, the first thing that we've got to do as parents is teach our kids that, you know, you, you've you got to get that relationship with God, yeah. and it's got to be yours. You've got to own it. You've got yeah. to make it your relationship. You know, well, I, we're I tell, not just, yeah, go ahead. I can tell my kids all the time, look, you know, you've got to memorize the commandments, you know, I can physically put you in the confessional and say, you've got 15 minutes, I'm standing outside, <laughs> let, let me out. But I can't make them love God. I can't make them choose to love mm -hmm. God and choose to make the yeah. faith their own. Then they choose to fight the fight their own. They choose to go to the grace through prayer and sacraments. Yeah. And then they have a better reason to seek what you're talking about, the higher dignity and, and the fullness of, mm -hmm. of true love. Yeah, and it, Pope John Paul II was talking to young people in Kazakhstan. If you want to Google Kazakhstan, John Paul II, <laughs> you remember how to spell Kazakhstan. Yeah. Um, you know, that, that without a relationship with Jesus Christ, that, that we start to see religion as a bunch of rules or doctrines that are hard mm -hmm. to accept, rules that we don't want to, don't want to live by. You know, this is part of selling a whole lifestyle, a whole lifestyle, saying, right. again, yes to real love, yes to human dignity, uh, and yes to God and His plan for your life. I awesome. think it's a great point that, I mean, it can be a cross, our fallen human nature that gets caught up in all this stuff, but it's through the cross we find Christ. So it can drive a person to a deeper prayer life, a deeper spiritual life. I think, Doug, that's a great point that, you know, underlying any kind of tool or solution we have, the heart of it's going to be connection with God that saves us, that gives us grace to overcome, you know, our, it, yeah. our vice. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right. And, and again, if that, if that piece is missing, they'll snap. Right. They'll say, I can't do this, I can't right. do this, and they'll just, they'll just break. You know, but if, right. if, they, if they know that God accepts them in our weakness, if they understand a bit of redemption, which again, all this is so crucial. That's why it's so crucial to tie in that gospel message with the chastity message, really. It makes mm -hmm. it ten times more effective. Yeah, on that point, we're going to go to break here before we do. Ladies, I want to say this to you young ladies out there watching right now. If you're going to date a guy who doesn't have a relationship with God, Look good, out. Look out, because you're, you're setting yourself up for some serious problems. Same with the men, with the ladies, you know, dating, or men dating a lady as well that way. But, boy, ladies, you want a, a leader and a fighter for your soul, he's got to have a relationship with God. So, you know, look at it that way. Your water, <laughs> right? water? I stole the water. <laughs> okay. Hey, where'd my water go? Right. The camera the, was on you. What happened to all that goodness in this cup? Oh. We're going to run to a break, ladies and gentlemen. Please don't go away. We'll be back with more with Chris on the Mount Truth. Mount Truth, the Rock House on EWTN. Don't go away. information on the ministry of Chris Stefanik, check out his website at www.chris-stefanik.com. That's chris-stefanik.com.
We're back, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for being with us. Thanks for not going away. For had you gone away, Chris would have gone after you and beat you over the head with uh, this mug of empty, <laughs> empty mug. Of, he stole my water. All right, we're back. Last segment. This is it, man. This goes. This is going fast. It's, it's a tough Too subject. Fast. It's a subject that has to be um, realized. That you know, as a chastity speaker, and I, and, and you, you talk about other things as chastity. And we got to make that plug for you too. If you want to bring Chris into your parish, ladies and gentlemen. Your 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 uh, youth function, whatever it may be, you know, contact him, get to his website, bring him out there. He's a d very dynamic speaker, and I get nothing financially for saying that about <laughs> him, by the way. So, yes, he does. No, he doesn't. No, no. <laughs> but he's a great guy, so you're gonna you're gonna enjoy him. Uh, bring him in and have him speak for you all. Um, but this is something that you, as a chastity speaker, you know, myself having given talks over the years and such, it can't come from just the speaker. Yeah. Every parent yeah. has to be a chastity yeah. speaker, so Absolutely. to speak. Absolutely. Um, you know, there was a recent study done of like, a couple thousand kids that asked them, what's, what's the number one influence in your life when it comes to the decisions you make in this whole area of your life, your sexual choices? Uh, well, you know, is it, is it the media? Is it your friends? What is it? O an overwhelming amount of these kids said mom and dad. Mm. Parents, the same parents were asked the same question. Only one in four of them got the answer right. Mom and dad, you were underestimating the influence you could have on your kids. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt. You know, you got to step up and take, take your role seriously and, and use that power, all right? The culture at large and all the stuff that we're talking about, the negatives coming from the culture and the media and the porn and the sexting and whatever, it, it's, it's a noisy stream. But a noisy stream is shallow, yeah? Mm -hmm. The truth is the Mississippi, man. You don't hear the Mississippi, but it's mighty. You know, it draws <laughs> people in. You know, teens, as is, is, is alluring as, as momentary pleasure can be, they weren't made for it. They were made for love. So when mm -hmm. they hear the message of truth, it's powerful, and when they hear it from mom and dad, it's got a power they can't shake. And don't you think it has to be on a very consistent basis? It can't just be, okay, I had that talk with my son yeah. three years ago. <laughs> we I had mean, the talk. We had the talk. <laughs> it has to be something that is a, a daily, lived out, okay, whether it's a comment here, a TV show that's shut off, a movie, no, you, we're not going to check out yeah. this movie, you know, oh, shut this off. I mean, if they're sending 2.5 billion emails out from the porn industry on a, on a daily basis, we yeah. parents can't just have one talk or two talks with our kids. There has to be a, a daily living of that dignity yeah, the, the, across the board yeah. in the family, right? Absolutely. The struggles from the outside against this message are tremendous. The struggles from the inside are tremendous, especially in, in a special way for guys. Guys, when you're eight weeks old in, in, your, in your mom's fetus, there's a surge of testosterone that kills cells in the communication center of the brain and enlarges cells in the sex center of the brain, which might explain some things. Uh, 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 you know, anyway, whatever. <laughs> well, at eight weeks, eight weeks in the in fetus, the womb. in the womb. So there's tremendous, even on a biological level, things are going through, especially as teenagers, both boys and girls, as they experience this, this total change in themselves for the first time. Mm -hmm. You know, to, to, to not talk to them is abandonment. Right. You know, and there's so many opportunities from what they're going through to this, their squeaking voice. To, to the billboard you just passed, so many opportunities to bring up the topic, take advantage of those opportunities, right. bring up the topic, guide them, give them the guidance. They're dying, literally dying for the message. Mm -hmm. They're dying and for the message. Yeah, yeah. And you know this because you, you travel around the country, you speak to young people, and you see this. And I, I'm curious, we were talking in the break, that you know, what is the heart of your message that really resonates, that gets their attention, that you know, you caught them between classes. Yeah. What what catches it? And again, it's it, it's they they come in expecting someone to say, no. And I'm saying, yes. Say yes. Mm -hmm. Say yes to authentic love. And you know what? We're going to say no to all the other stuff, mm -hmm. no doubt. But we're going to say no to it because it's contrary to love. It's contrary to who God calls us to be as human beings. And, and p kids might who, who make emotional decisions instead of thoughtful decisions right. will sometimes you know automatically say well it feels loving to mess around so isn't it loving and then I gotta clarify that you know what hey I love you so much let me risk your health right. I love you so much let me give you a secret to keep from your parents I love you so much let me decrease your chance of a happy marriage don't you love me right. <laughs> it's, it's, like, yeah, it's the polar opposite of love and culturally we put the cart before the horse right we, we yeah. put sex first and what you know, the sex is supposed to be the expression of a loving commitment yeah. relationship of marriage, right? Yeah. And so they, this doesn't substitute for the love part. No, and, it doesn't. Yeah. It, it, and it's, it, they and wind up... What they're searching for is the love, right? The it. fulfillment. They, and yeah. they wind up with an imitation of love. Yeah. Or guys are searching to become a real man. And they wind up being imitation men. They wind up being broken men. And if you show them the difference between what's real and what's fake... And, and, I, and I tell them straight out, I'm not inviting you to something that's easy to accomplish. I'm inviting you to something that is authentic and true. Mm -hmm. And if you see what's real, you know what? It doesn't matter if it's difficult. It doesn't matter if your friends are going to mock you in the locker room. It doesn't matter if you're going to be alone on a Saturday night instead of with an imitation being used. Mm -hmm. Because once you see what, and it doesn't matter, you know what? If you fall down a hundred times, 
you're going to get up a hundred times and be patient with yourself like God is patient with you. Because once you see what's real, what else is there? You, you know, mean. it's like Peter talking to Jesus. Where else are we going to go? Right. You have the words of eternal life. Right. Where, where else am I going to go? You know, and that's, that's why the, the message consistently knocks kids out of their yeah. seats. Yeah. And they didn't expect that. They come yeah. thinking they're going to get some very shallow message of just say no. And it's like, whoa. And the message the is whole coming, life is turned upside down. It's coming right out of the heart of Christianity. It is. I mean, God is at the center of it. Yeah, and, center and, of the picture. and I tell him right at the start of the talks, too. I say, what, even though the whole culture is inviting you to something, what I'm about to say is going to echo a voice that's already in your soul. What I'm about to say, you're already hearing in your heart. Yeah. And I want you to listen to it for the next hour. It's kind of like realizing that the body is, is made up of, what, 75 to 80 percent water. And you give that body a drink of cool water on a hot day, and it resonates physically with the body because the body is wired for that 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 water, that's it. which we're, our bodies are created physically yeah. for that. Yeah. Uh, there's no imitation there. That that's the truth of it that's right it, there. Yeah. Um, and something the else, green stuff you drink is not going to do it. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> vitamin <laughs> water. <laughs> no, but it's just got a little natural coloring in it. But one thing I also want to address: we got a couple emails we want to get to, but is also modesty has everything to do with chastity. This is in the ninth commandment in the Catechism. And, and the, the commandment list, speaks of it as a battle for purity. Mm -hmm. Look it up, ladies and gentlemen, battle for purity. Yeah. Ninth commandment in the catechism talks about modesty being an integral and necessary part of the virtue of chastity. And modesty, not just of the way we dress, but of feelings and emotions and entertainment and conversation. Yeah. And in our youth groups, even in youth groups, we get into situations, I've seen it, you've seen it, where the familiarity between boys and girls in youth groups, even in the name of God and for the, for the sake of, the, of our youth group, mm -hmm. has kind of broken down, has it not? Where sometimes we get a little too familiar, too comfortable. We're laying on each other's laps. We're hanging out a little too close at times. Uh, that's one area. Yeah, yeah. Don't well, you think you know, is, a, is a problem needs to be looked at? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the whole, the whole thing, a lot of kids, the first question they'll ask if they're into their faith is how far is too far? If they're not, the first question they ask when they hear the chastity speaker is why should I care? Mm -hmm. And then, then, then you get, wow, I was made for this. Why so should I care? Okay. You know, but uh, how far is too far? And really, the answer to that question is, you know, the second you've stepped into the near occasion of sin, I love that old-fashioned phrase, man. There's, you know, the second you've stepped into the fire, mm -hmm. you're going to get burned. Right. You know, so that's how far is too far. And we don't condemn the fact that people have thoughts and feelings and biological urges. And if you don't, you should go see a doctor. Sure. All right? We don't condemn that fact because God made us with these, with these, with these parts to us to, to carry on the human race. You know, so we don't take all that into the wrong situation. How far is too far? The second you get yourself in the wrong situation, you got too far. Mm -hmm. You know? Right. So when you get that familiarity of teenagers kind of, you know, hanging on to each other. You keep a healthy distance. Keep a healthy distance. You Leave room for the Holy Spirit. Exactly. And respect <laughs> two feet for the Holy Spirit when you're dancing. So that way you can keep that distance there. But also uh, entertainment. And I'm just going to throw this out. And I know this was something that we, we, we agreed not to go into detail on because of the, the show. And this, is a, uh, this could be a whole show itself. Is even things like the whole Twilight series, which I know I get a ton of questions on this, um, about the, the romantic notions that are found in this and the danger of this. There's a certain immodesty of the feelings and the emotions in there yeah. that are misleading a lot of young ladies into a lot of dangerous areas uh, to understand what true chaste feelings mm -hmm. are, mm -hmm. right? Now, but this isn't just in the Twilight series. I mean, the whole Twilight thing is a whole other thing that really irritates me to no end about how now we've, we've started to idolize as our heroic men vampires the undead, you know. Oh, yeah. they, they're, 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 How starved they are for real men. Oh, yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> they're sh they're anyway, shaving their chest, these mercy. hairless wonders running around out there, these, these young guys. <laughs> it, it breaks my heart to think that uh, this is what our young ladies are seeing as some yeah. sort of a, of a romantic notion. It's, it, it kills me, but this is, uh, this is part of the bigger problem. But along <laughs> those lines, then, what do you say to, when it comes to entertainment as a whole to guard yeah. and protect uh, modestly feelings? What's against, against and, and that's the least of our problems. You know, a lot of it's the soft core porn they get in the R-rated movies. Mm -hmm. There was one movie recently where it took a day and a half to film one sex scene. The woman was covered with bruises when they were done. These are the kinds of expectations that young men bring into their marriage. And we wonder why there's so many failed marriages. Mm -hmm. I think that has a part to do with it. Uh, we're, we're literally poisoning young people by the stuff that they watch. You know, um, so they got to they got to be really careful about yeah. that. Yeah, so I think I think I agree. Romance novels, movies, uh, you know, all this sort of stuff, music in general, videos, these sorts of things have got to be guarded very carefully. Yeah. We got a number of emails I know we want to get to. We just got to get. Let's get to one email. Nicole, our email lady for the night here. Okay. Can you give us send us an email this way, please? Yep. Dear Chris, I feel like despairing as a result of the direction our culture is going. 
How do you find hope in a predominantly godless generation? Thanks. Tina from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We've got about one minute to answer. Okay, no. <laughs> this is the stuff we were made for. Again, this is how I have hope with the whole chastity message. This is not a message that comes from the outside. It resonates with what's on the inside. And one thing that gives me a lot of hope about the, quote, godless generation is that the world isn't even competing with us anymore. You know, back in the 60s, at least, the world pretended to have something of meaning that competed with what the faith gives. Mm -hmm. Now it's just nothing. Mm -hmm. It's just absolute zero. So when they hear that we're offering them something, a purpose, of meaning, of hope, they want it. Right. They want it, you know? And we have, another thing that gives us hope is we have a Heavenly Father who's absolutely positively in love with us. You know, and I see, I see in my own heart a little of my love for my kids and how God loves us. Mm. You know, I, do I have one minute for a story? Uh, 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Yes. Um, I, I, I lost my son Joey for 20 minutes last summer. I was looking, it was when I was camping. It was the most terrifying 20 minutes of my life. I'm in the ponds looking for him, and a prayer just exploded out of my heart. And it was the scariest prayer I ever said. How old is Joey? He, he, was, he was four. Okay. I said, God, you give me so many blessings. Take them all back. Give me my son. And, and in that second, I saw, I saw how much my Heavenly Father loves me. That when I wandered to the dark forest to sin and get lost, He's willing to give everything. He's not satisfied with anything less than giving his very self, even to the point of becoming mm -hmm. our food, to get us back. Right. That gives me hope in a godless culture. That God is still in love with the world, and he's still reaching people, and he's still pulling them back to himself. That's awesome. I think you're right. I think in the midst of the bombastrous nature that we see of our world today, the clarity resonates even more powerfully than before, the hope of the truth that we're all created and wired for. Amen. All right. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, next week we will have Teresa Tomio talking about all things girl. It's a TV show I think that's coming up. Your favorite. Yeah. <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> Father, <laughs> I'll let you take it away. And may our Heavenly Father shine His face upon you and give you His peace. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We'll see you next week. I'm a new freak, yeah. This is how I roll. Animal print pants out of control. It's red food with the big ass bra. And like Bruce Lee, I got the clout, yeah. Girl, look at that body. Girl, look at that body. Girl, look at that body. I work out. Girl, look at that body. Girl, look at that body. Girl, look at that body. I work out when I walk in the spot. This is what I see. Everybody stops and This body's not mine, it's yours, it's yours, it's yours So every day I'm fighting a war to free from it all To love free from it all Free from it all To love free from it all Okay, saved at an early age In 30 days it felt like I had managed to murder most of my worldly ways With well, a couple stayed in couple, with a couple years of wondering Am I missing out on thrills I had thrown am away? So all this in vain, strain to remain yeah. And refrain and sustain through this flame in my veins uh, Lust is his name, yeah. it's virgin a bird yeah. I ain't never hit the club, maybe I just need a taste uh, A little taste, a little taste, it's like a little yeah. drink A little drink, my poison, my yeah. kill me yeah. I heard say Without sex, life is a waste well, Crisis overall, overall, I kept my pants on my waist Turn beautiful chicks away, dudes swear that I'm lame No, I got a sex drive, the spirit's holding the brace It's no brace, this is just infinite work Content with my rib, nothing is sweet enough to dessert hey. See, some of y'all done bought the line That sex is what makes you a man But that's not what makes you a man Anybody can go and lay with a woman What makes you a man is being defined by who you say you are in Christ. If you have Christ, you have all that you need. Everything you need is bound up in the resurrected Savior. Look, can I be real with you? They say that women want attention, that's the real issue. And if they only wore dresses just a little bit longer, then the flesh that I'd be feeding wouldn't burn like a soda. Wait, is that the reason why your brain isn't changed? When you at home by yourself in front of computer screens? Or is that the reason why I sit there and pray on? Little girls who in school still playing with crayons. No, it's the flesh that all men should fight. While Satan persists to tempt us with our own wicked delights. Because they intimacy, the 
glorify me The best you wanna do is me please Glorify me That girl is not an object for play That's a woman that I bought me I don't care what niggas say It's just like her Sex is God's creation You spit inside of space If you don't use it, I ain't made it Sex is a gift from God, but we've taken it and made it idolatry. We've taken it and put it in the place of God, and we worship it. And so it comes out in all kinds of profane ways. And so we blame the women for what they're wearing, and we blame the media for what they're producing. But we never blame ourselves for how we've twisted God's gift to glorify us. Rise like the tide when I go surfing You can see just what I prize in my life When I go searching, we're roaming with my eyes And surprise, sin is lurking It gets me every time, and inside, man, I'm hurting Pretending that I'm fine, but it's a lie, man, I'm hurting Cause what's inside is never satisfied So I surf it, afraid of getting caught So I hide, I'm so nervous Scared that I may die, begging Christ to reverse it Love you are the gospel, such a bad scene Even if I clear my history, my past ain't clean And I can try to clean it up, but it never Seems enough, I trust myself, then hurt myself Fail, this is tough I need the gospel clear, see my sin for what it is One brings life, the other death, man to me Plus my kids, selfish in my ways And it's gon' put me in the grave But Christ can save us, it's free, no longer be a slave My spirit will live on my flesh week And this moment is but a test seat Yeah, no degrading on all these pleasures I just wanna see you as my treasure Because he's the only one that can get me through this And he's the only one that can make me free Take 